the food, social and infrastructural insecurity across the country is only going to increase the number of rural to urban migration from residential areas to the popular cities like Lagos. The Lagos State Ministry of Home Affairs and relevant agencies in Prasatos are doing their best to keep the numbers in check and provide for their basic necessities when they're brought in into Lagos. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of This is Lagos. The Lagos State Government has announced that pilgrimage visits will not be to Israel but to Jordan this year. The state's Commissioner for Home Affairs, citing several reasons for the change, says while it is not compulsory for Christians wishing to embark on the visit, Jordan is the next available country to Israel for the believers to visit in May. Israel is still not open till now for tourists because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, during that course, another thing happened. Israel uh, fighting uh, uh, Palestinian. Palestine. So uh, we, we, we agreed that going to Israel is not safe for our people. Mr. Olani Wadjo Legushi further revealed that the Lagos state government is waiting for an official confirmation from Saudi Arabia to review the allocated number of pilgrims it will receive this year following rumors of a limited number of pilgrims to be allowed into the Middle Eastern country this year due to COVID-19 restrictions. We are not dealing with Ministry of Health of Saudi Arabia. We are dealing with Ministry of Hajj until they come out to make a, pronounce, a, a pronouncement on the number of people and requirements and age that can go for Hajj. The Lagos State Government has revealed that laws enabling some agencies have become obsolete and will be revealed in order to achieve the desired results. The Special Advisor to the Governor and Parastatos Monitoring Office, Afolabi Ayatayo, says 54 or such laws have been forwarded to the Lagos Reform Commission in order to reduce litigation and improve enforcement of state policies. In collaboration with the Ministry of Justice through the Law Reform Commission, with the Ministry of Justice, embark on the review of enabling laws or parasitas that are either obsolete or hindering their performances. The total number of 54 such enabling laws have been forwarded to the Law Reform Commission for review. Hopefully, when the exercise is completed, effective affected agencies will have better enabling laws that will enhance their operations and deliver their services. Effectively. We have along the line um, efforts to educate the parasitas to generate their own funds by themselves so that um, they, will be, they won't be waiting for the state's handout at the end of the month to run their affairs. Special advisor to the governor also revealed that 20 parastatos were affected during the aftermath of the NSAS protest stretching from Leki Aja to Badagri, with properties destroyed said to be replaced as resources become available. The committee put in place uh, monitoring the funds that come in for distribution or um, to be expended on all destroyed items like police stations and the rest of them. You know the enormity of the destruction. It's not something that you can just go out there and get as a whole. There are really lots of police stations that are still out there in the, in the, the, the state of destroy, destruction and um, they, are, they have to visit all those places, more than 180 places, such places where destructions took place. So for them to come up with total aggregate sum is not an easy thing. All of us are still expecting the outcome and how we are going to go about. I mean, it's, things, it's something that will take some time to execute. The Lagos State Government says it is keen to improve the outlook and ease the conduct of business in marketplaces. The State Commissioner for Local Government and Community Development, Wale Ahmed, said the need and has stated the Special Advisory Council set up by Governor Abadide Saolu. Generally, it is for them to handle issues. That's one. Two, for us as a government to have a body to relate with. So we can call a meeting 
of the market advisory council right now and say okay this is what is going on we want you to help us go and pass this on to all the market folks in Lagos State. So it's the body that will relate with the government and who will, by virtue of what they do naturally, get to know all what happens in this state so that we can have a peaceful, conducive, hygienic environment. The commissioner also gave details in upscaling the capacity of local government to their duties overseeing 64 water projects, installation of transformers and road rehabilitation across communities in the state. Mr. Governor invited all the councillors representing those wards and directed them to go back to their wards and come up with a particular project they believe is what is needed most in those words and that's the genesis of the 377 statewide project it was carried out through this uh, department and the project covered 257 roads with seven buildings 23 rural electrification projects nine boreholes and two jetties to link communities across the state, thereby making communities accessible and as a result, engender socioeconomic activities at the grassroots. The International Airport Road had recently seen a facelift after several months of work. It became imperative for the state government to provide routes for its high-capacity buses along with equivalent terminals for those living along the corridor. This terminal in Mafuluku is, however, a result of a federal and state partnership with the Federal Aviation Authority of Nigeria and the state government collaborating to make this a reality. From this terminal, there would be commuter services to Oshodi and Mile 2. This would also be expanded soon to cater for committing needs of other areas. This terminal would enhance the environmental aesthetics of this location and promote orderliness within it as well as eliminate the menace caused by parking and picking up passengers along the road. Fan is proud to say with all confidence that Mr. Governor, Mr. Papajizi Somolu and his team are also collaborating and partnering with us on a number of other projects that would impact on the state and the entire nation. This administration will also soon implement the construction of two interchanges at Marina and Mile 2. At these locations, we would have the rail, water transportation, and the bus system integrated. Governor of Lagos State, Babajide Songulu, while appreciating the contribution of all stakeholders to the establishment of this infrastructure, calls for patients from residents currently being inconvenienced with the level of construction sites in the state. It is also designed to give our people the opportunity to invest in public transportation and solidify our plan to ensure that over time our public transportation system is moved from an unregulated framework to a more regulated framework. We'll be completing the IFAPO, the Ju bus terminal very soon, the one in Ojota, the one in Aja, and the one in Abuleba subsequently. The governor notes that the recent events from the previous year have set the state back in its transportation drive, calling on private investors to see the potential opportunities and help modernize the mass transit system. This hearing has representatives of civil society groups from Lagos, Ogun and Oyo, labor unions, religious leaders and traditional rulers amongst others present. The Senate who conveyed this gathering is assuring the resolutions of each hearing will be given the adequate consideration and due process within the stipulated period. Just as in our day-to-day -day lives, we take stock of the past and plans for the future. So it must be with the nation. Indeed, this ongoing review provides a platform for the good people of Nigeria to express their opinions on the fundamental laws that govern our lives and proposals that will lead to the highest good for the greatest number of people. 
Governor Abajide Son Olu harps on the need to devote more powers to the state in order to ensure proper monitoring of relevant resources while joining the clamor for special status for Lagos. The primary issues on the table for this public hearing include, but certainly not limited to, increased participation of women and vulnerable groups in our governance, local government administration and autonomy, state police, fiscal federalism and revenue allocation issues, judicial reforms, electoral reforms, residency and indigenship, constitutional rules for traditional rulers. We must also come to the exercise in the spirit of give and take with a willingness to mutually compromise and avoid unnecessary tension and division along the way. It was time for deliberations and with the state legislative arms and other relevant stakeholders present, the need for separation of power and autonomy was always going to be echoed amongst other demands. No criminalization of the interference and the activities of the legislature. Um, it doesn't happen in Lagos. It doesn't happen in Lagos. Then we cannot close our eyes to the happiness uh, in the nation. And if I don't know they are to be written as they were not, and if I don't know they are to be written as uh, they were south. This is in line with the wish of people of our government as they said by the Britain government in 1997. The first issue that we have that the 1999 With another hearing set to commence from the House of Representatives, many would hope that some of the challenges which may have resulted in the presumed marginalization of some Nigerians can be resolved. The Lagos State Government has revealed it's removed over 2,500 illegal pensioners earning the tune of 1.5 billion naira from the state's coffers within the last two years. The Commissioner for Establishment Training and Pension, Ajibola Kwanle, said the payment of pension, which has come with a 33% increment, has been made seamless and transparent with the partnership of private pension managers and the digitization of pension process in the state. Because of COVID, we were forced to, I guess, move this online and we developed and deployed the online verification of our pensioners. What this enabled us to do is to verify our pensioners online real time using their biometric data and they could do this from the comfort of their homes wherever they were. We were able to clean up the database of our pensioners and we offloaded um, about 2,500 pensioners that should not be on that um, uh, database. Great efficiency has been recorded in the process and this of course will lead to significant savings for the government um, to the tune of about 1.5 billion over the course of the year. I'm also pleased to announce that Lagos State did not stop the payment of pensions to our defined benefit scheme pensioners. In spite of how hard it was for the state with um, uh, funds for, uh, being deployed towards COVID and um, you know fighting the economic crisis last year, we were able to still ensure regular and sustained payment to our pensioners. She further added that the state government is looking to facilitate housing schemes for workers in the state through their requisite labor unions as well as other upscaling and self-development courses. Another major for us, quite major program that we introduced this year um, in the Directorate of Training is um, the KPI Framework Workshop. Now, this KPI Workshop is the foundation for effective performance management um, within the public service. I spoke about the third pillar for us, which is leveraging technology. This is what we have used in spite of COVID, in spite of the challenges that 2020 threw our way. We were able to use technology to still deliver and even over deliver on the uh, uh, the promises of our mandate. Meanwhile, the state's head of service, Hakim Muri Okwala, also reviewed plans to digitize its process to cut cost of service delivery. Lagos therefore became the first state in Nigeria to launch the learning management systems digital platform 
in March 2020, making available to all our workforce an online training portal which boasts of over 2,000 LinkedIn courses all year round. While arrangements are presently ongoing for the deployment of this same facility in the local government service for continuous professionalism and development of all our offices. Lagos has started migrating a lot of our services to the digital world. Uh, the, the LIRS Lagos State Internal Revenue Service has an e-tax payment platform. The Ministry of, Economic, uh, of Physical Planning and Urban Development has an e-permitting platform. And that is our intention, to make all services that are as, as digital as are possible. What you then need beyond the virtual enablement are centers that are close to people. It doesn't really make sense that everybody in Lagos has to come to Alausa to come and submit documents or do whatever they need to do. We should be able to take governance to the people. The Senate Committee visiting Lagos also visited the state governor. They echoed some of the demands made at the public hearing while also giving reasons why Lagos will be given the special consideration once the law becomes enabled. We know the agitation from Lagos and a lot of people and those I would think all of us here, there are things all of us have been agitating for. We are looking for a Nigeria that is better, that um, at the end of the day that we too we will relax and have peace of mind to be in our homes. And I pray that at the, uh, by the grace of God, God will give us the Nigeria of our dreams. And it won't be when we are old and gray, we will all enjoy it. And I think we see the promised land right there. Because coming, I live, I'm, I'm from Lagos, but coincidentally I was passing through Ikeji, I was asking, where are we? You know, that is how change is happening around us without us noticing. And I think I want to tell Nigerians that despite even if the change is coming in baby steps, they have to see it. They said, what, once we see it and believe it, this is what we get. I see Lagos transforming by the day. It's not that because you are here. I've seen the development. And governance is not about us doing something very new. It's about building on the structure that is there making it modern, working on it and getting it, uh, you know, to meet world standard. The senators that are here, we assure you that Lagos interest is our interest and Nigeria interest, is, you know, we have the opportunity to also represent Lagos in the bigger picture. We want to commend each and every one of you and your entire leadership for taking this bold step. It's such a very difficult time for us as leaders to be in a position of leadership and you have taken the bull by the horn to say that no matter what it is, we will go out, we will speak to our people, we will hear them, we will feel their pulse, and we will go back and we'll do the needful. That's why our government are indeed very excited and happy that even as things are right now, you have decided to take on this very, very onerous assignment. So the vision that we have is to be able to put the template of Lagos, you know, on an autopilot where we all can continue to develop on and make it a really livable, sustainable city that will compete with any other city of its size, you know, globally. And for us, we believe that the partnership that we see with the National Assembly is second to none. We want to thank you uh, for representing us well. Also want to thank our other representatives in Lagos and in Southwest, you know, for doing us that, uh, you know, that proud representation. And to reiterate again once more, that the, the, the advocacy around special status of Lagos is because it is for all of us. This is a Lagos that indeed all of us will be truly, really proud of, truly, really proud of. And so we're continuing to appeal and to state that and to reiterate that we also still believe that state police will help us. There's so much security issues in our country and we are spending so much. We have a 6,500 neighborhood watch that we're paying and we're supporting on a month-on-month -month basis. We've donated about 1,200 to, to the constabulary, the community police of the Nigerian police force, which we're still paying their salary. We're planning in the next three, four weeks to also procure additional equipment for them, vehicles, communication gadgets, bulletproof vests, you know, crash elements, I mean, um, um, ballistic elements, and everything they require to continue to keep the city and the state safe. 
So if we're doing all of this, we believe that even if we have a state police, we can only but do better. Lagos State is situated right between the Atlantic Ocean and Ogo State. While the state government is taking care of its boundaries with the water, collaboration is necessary with the Ogun State Government to cater for residents on the boundaries between the two states. The Lagos State Governor, along with the entourage from the states, where in Ogun State to sign a new memorandum of understanding to help cater for communities along these border lines. Lagos and Ogun share the biggest boundaries in the country as both states have several communities right on the edge. Some of these communities have somewhat been neglected over time as issues of boundaries have come in between several administrations in the past seeing projects abruptly ended midway. The two states have come together to address these problems. We usually say that we have two borders, the Atlantic Ocean and Ogun states. Um, since we cannot do so much with the Atlantic Ocean, we certainly need to look back and have a warm embrace with Ogun states. We're driven by the desire to stimulate the social economic growth, to bridge development gap, and to ensure that whilst Lagos continues to remain a mega city, Ogun State can indeed help to transform that and create another sub mega city in our region. In light of current global practices in managing mega cities, it has become obvious that the best way to accelerate social economic development between our two states is by embracing a more collaborative approach to growth, to development, and to an urban sustainability. Proximity of Lagos and Ogun State means that our destinies are linked and intertwined. Over the years, Lagos has continued to grow very rapidly, and it's now classified as a mega city. The growth of Lagos has continued outwards into Ogun State, and majority of our border towns in Ogun State can now be referred to Great Lagos. As a result of this, the development and policies in both states impact one another. They conceived the idea of a joint development commission to formally identify and strategize on the issues which are important to both states. These include the issues of infrastructure development, taxation, border disputes, environmental issues, waste management, amongst others. Today's signing of an MOU is the beginning of the formalization of this relationship, which will bring more systematic and coordinated policies and developments in both our states. While both states already have the relevant agencies and ministries responsible for their development, the collaboration within both states have been clogged in the past, as stating a new outfit that will be dedicated to addressing the needs of the border towns. The Memorandum of Understanding precedes the Joint Development Commission that will be established to mutually tackle some of the issues that are prevalent between the two of us. Issues around transportation, around environment and urban challenges, fiscal planning, housing, border issues, infrastructure development, and of course, security. Infrastructure development, including development of boundary towns, water works, mass transportation by rail, road and waterways, revenue and taxation including PAY remittances, border town revenue management and collection signage and advertisement agent charges, security including information sharing arrangement on residence identification and other security and intelligence gathering and sharing. When the history of the southwest of Nigeria is written in many years to come, Today, the 24th day of May 2021, will stand out for one thing. This is the day that the two states, two giant states in the southwest of Nigeria, decided to formalize the ether to existing socio-cultural relationship between them. This collaboration will galvanize development in the Southwest a great deal. This is a pace-setting agreement and the people of the two states will in the very near future 
reap great benefits from this collaboration. The union between both states is going to create an economic hub that is second to none. The advantages that Lagos has will be merged with the advantages that Ogun State possesses. And together, they would unleash a behemoth on the economic activities of Nigeria. Residents of communities along these border lines will be hopeful to benefit from the services they may have been deprived of in the past, as both states will look to sustain the policies and developments visible on either side. Many communities that are bound between Lagos and Ogun State have suffered infrastructural deficits over the years. A road infrastructure starting from this side may not necessarily get to the other end, as that would mean a trespass into the next state. With this new MOU and the agency said to be set up, all of these problems will be a thing of the past. That completes our episode for this week. Until next time, I am Wilson Amoni, and this is Lagos. <laughs>